Blood the Last Vampire, 2000 anime film produced by Production IG and SPE Visual Works. It was directed by Hiroyuki Kitakubo, who worked on Rojin Z, Robot Carnival, and Golden Boy. Golden Boy is a good series. I should maybe do something on that one of these days. It was written by Kinji Kamiyama, who has worked on stuff like uh, Pat Labor, uh, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. He also worked on DuckTales the original DuckTales series as a, a background. He did the backgrounds for that. I was like, okay, that's pretty cool because DuckTales was like one of my favorite cartoons as a kid. <laughs> but yeah, Blood the Last Vampire has a very special place in my heart because it is the very first anime film I ever watched. For anyone who is interested, the very first anime series I ever watched was actually Serial Experiments Lane. The very first OVA I ever watched was Bubblegum Crisis. And the very first anime film I ever watched was Blood the Last Vampire. And um, it was really good. I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. My only regret was that it was too short. Um, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But yeah, uh, according to Wikipedia, the uh, Production IG's president wanted to create a new project instead of just cranking out adaptations of already like, existing anime series and manga series and things like that. So he approached this guy named Maruro Ushi, who ran a series of lectures known as the Ushi Jiyuku. I guess it's for teaching new filmmakers how to create their own projects. And he asked like, his students to submit ideas. And one of them was Kinji Kamiya, who came up with the basics for the film, which is basically a girl in a sailor suit wielding a samurai sword. And from there, vampires and monsters and other stuff were added onto it. I don't know what it is, but yeah, the 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 image of a girl in a, in the sailor suit in the schoolgirl outfit wielding a samurai sword, like it's just visually enticing to me. Like I don't know, it just looks badass for some reason. I don't know why, <laughs> but yeah, this uh, movie is only forty five minutes long. The reason for that being that it was actually planned to be a three part. It was actually supposed to be a, a three episode OVA series but uh the lack of time and the lack of money made it so that that was impossible so only the middle segment got adam animated so out of the three episodes only the the second one is the one that actually got animated and instead of an ova series it became a, an anime film but despite that it did branch out into other different types of medias there was uh three japanese light novels based off of this movie only one of them has ever been officially licensed in uh in the west and i actually own a copy of that uh, i'm currently reading it right now that one is blood the last vampire night of the beast so yeah i'm currently reading that uh that series and then there were two more other ones that never left uh japan there was also two video games i believe two or three video games but those never left japan either and then there's actually a live action movie that came out nine years later in 2009, which I watched. And I know a lot of people kind of crap on it, but I actually enjoyed it. Obviously, I like the original way better, even though the live action expands upon more things to, you know, crank out that runtime. I, I, I do like the, uh, I, I still liked it though. And then, of course, what people probably most know about Blood the Last Vampire would be uh, Blood Plus, the anime series. And then um, there was also another anime series, uh, Blood Sea, which some people kind of seem to not really care for. Both of those series are set in like alternate universes. They have nothing whatsoever to do with this movie or this character, other than the fact that in both of those, Saya... The main character from this movie is in those movies and she's, you know, a vampire and stuff like that. Well, the sires in those have different backgrounds, but it's basically the same theme and stuff. Think of the other ones kind of like the Final Fantasy games where they, they, they share a lot of the, the same elements, but they're each their own contained stories in their own separate universes that don't really connect other than like the themes and tones and monsters and things like that. Uh, yeah, there was that, and those spawned their own light novels and video games. I do have a light novel from Blood Plus, and I wished 
that pseudo pseudo 51 who did one of my favorite video games of all time killer seven as well as no more heroes and shadow of the damned and lollipop chainsaw he worked on a uh, blood plus video game called one night kiss i believe it was called and unfortunately that never came out in the west and i i wish i could, if there's anyone out there that does you know translations because i know there are there are fan translations out there for for a bunch of japanese games that never you know left japan please someone do one for for that game because i really really want to, to to watch it and just it's just play if i could play it i would but because i really want to experience a blood story from pseudo 51 because i want to see how crazy he's gonna make it but yeah um i think we kind of discussed already a lot about this so yeah this is a uh, like i said 45 minute movie super short but that's just because it was it was planned to be longer and it just never did one of the interesting things about this movie is that most of it i believe was actually in english because this movie takes place uh it takes place in japan but it takes place on an american air base and because it's an american air base most of the characters speak in english and i believe they actually got english speakers to play the part and so um, most of this is actually in English. And uh, of course, in Japan, it was subtitled. And then the Japanese part, you know, obviously wasn't. But then when it came here, the Japanese, I believe the Japanese was subtitled. The English left alone. And then, of course, there's, I think there's also full dub where even the Japanese parts got dubbed. But uh, yeah, enough talk. Let's jump into this. So I'm going to do a summary of the entire movie. And we'll talk about it and stuff like that. So... If you don't want to be spoiled, pause the video, go out, watch the movie, and come back, if you will. <laughs> but yeah, let's get into this. All right, so our movie starts with probably one of my favorite anime openings ever. I'll have to say it's probably my second favorite anime opening. And by, actually, I should probably use a different phrase in opening, because when people think anime openings, they think, like, the intro theme song. By opening, I mean the very first scene. So, my, my favorite anime first scene ever would be the very first scene from Bubblegum Crisis OVA Episode 1, where we have Pris getting ready to, to go on stage, and then she starts singing. Meanwhile, we have the AD police attacking a boomer and stuff like that. That musical montage moment, my favorite anime intro ever. This is my second. So we start off uh, in, this is the year 1966. It's leading up to the Vietnam War. So we have our main character, Saya. She's chilling out in a subway train and she's holding on to this, what looks like, a, like this tube looking thing. And the subway train comes to a stop. Everybody gets out except for one person, a man in a business suit. So the train departs and now it's just Saya and this man in a business suit. And the man's kind of dozing off in his chair. Meanwhile, Sai is just kind of watching him. And all of a sudden, the, the train is underground and it hits the CERN marker. And once it hits that marker, it triggers something. And all the lights in the train start going out one by one. And as soon as that happens, Sai rushes out of her seat, pulls out a katana from inside the tube, and charges at the businessman. And the dude doesn't even have a chance to do anything. He just gets up. He tries to escape into the next train, but Saya cuts him down. And then the train comes to a stop, and we have David. And David is Saya's handler. Uh, there's David and there's Lewis. Lewis is kind of, he seems to be new, because he, he seems to not really know how to handle Saya. You get the feeling David has been with Saya for a good long while. He knows how to kind of handle her, her and deal with her. Everyone starts leaving. It's just David, Saya, and Louis. And Louis goes inside to take photos of the what they think is a vampire. Because Saya is supposed to hunt down vampires. So the man in the business suit is supposed to be uh, a vampire. They call it like... Um, I, I can't pronounce the word for the life of me. So I'm, I'm just going to call them... I'm just going to call them vampires because they just make it easier on me. So yeah, he goes in to check it out and he realizes that the body is just a dude. It's just a regular human. So he starts freaking out. He's like, I don't think this was a human. I, mean, I don't think this was a vampire Saya killed. I think it was just a regular human. And Dave is trying to placate him like, nah, nah, he just hasn't turned yet. Uh, meanwhile, he's trying to give Saya a briefing on her next mission. Uh, basically, there has been uh, a suicide in... Uh, in the Yokoto Air Base, it's an American air base, and 
uh, they believe that the suicide is the the workings of a vampire. That it wasn't really a, a suicide, but rather someone being drained by a vampire and made to look like a suicide. Again, as he's trying to explain this mission, Lewis is consistently freaking out about the dude in the the subway train, and he keeps saying, like, it's, "It's I don't think this is a vampire. I think this is a human." We never get to really find out whether it was or not. As you watch the movie, it's kind of hinted that maybe it actually was just a regular human. And Saya just either got the wrong information or something. And I'll, I'll bring this up later on. Yeah, we see Saya walking down the city streets. And then as that's happening, we cut to another suicide. This one wasn't on the airbase. But rather, um, I don't know if this was a prostitute or if it's just someone working at a bar. But uh, it's this woman who was dating one of the soldiers on the airbase. And she was found dead in her tub with her wrists slit. And it's ruled a suicide. But there's hints that it wasn't a suicide. That once again, she was killed by a vampire, drained of her blood, and made made it to look like it was a suicide. And we see uh, what looks like... I can't tell if they're prostitutes. It seems like they're prostitutes, but one of them owns a bar. So they could just be prostitutes that work at the bar. They could be prostitutes that hang out in front of the bar. But we see these women. They're gonna. One of them is going to play a part later on. But uh, yeah, they're, they're kind of watching all this and discussing about what's, what's happening and about the woman who committed suicide. And then we cut to the Yokota Air Base where we see Makiho Amano, she is a nurse. She is, I guess, very meek is the best way to uh, describe her. She's very quiet and stuff, but she seems like a, you know, like a good person. She's friendly and stuff. And uh, we see her arriving at the high school, and, and we find out that at this high school, the, um, it's Halloween. Halloween's coming up, and they're going to have a huge Halloween party. As this is happening, um, Saya shows up in her schoolgirl outfit. Makiho realizes that this girl stands out and she's asking the girl like you know are you lost like are you are you japanese and she starts speaking to saya in japanese and as i ask her where the principal office is at she gets taken to the principal office where uh david is basically i believe the cover story that they use was that saya will pose at the high school for just a little while just to kind of um, see how uh the american high school is on this space it's just kind of explained like that like she's not going to be a permanent student she's just there for just a little while just to kind of watch and that's the cover story for her to be able to infiltrate the school or the base i should say and hunt down uh, the vampire that's here and then they're under the impression that there's two vampires that they have to hunt down yeah well we have uh saya talking with david and stuff like that uh she's kind of complaining about the school girl outfits and then she also complains about her sword She's like, the, the sword that I have is getting rusty. It, it's dull. I'm not going to be able to cut anything. I need a new sword. And this is going to play a part again later on. So we see Saya. She's in class. And uh, one of the students tries to be friendly with her. And Saya just kind of brushes her off and, you know, tells her to mind her own business. And I kind of miss this Saya because the Saya in the other Blood series, that Saya is a lot friendly and outgoing and stuff like that this saya is just basically straight up lone wolf don't talk to me don't bother me leave me the f alone just let me do my job oh she doesn't want anything to do with people she just is like i kind of like her like blunts go f yourself leave me alone personality i guess it makes sense not to use that personality for an anime series just because i mean it works for like a movie or in this case like a short but Maybe a character like that won't go far in an anime series. I don't know. I just, I kind of miss it. But yeah, she tells the, the student to, you know, F off. The, the student is uh, Sharon. And Sharon has a friend named Linda. She's like, all right, Linda, let's go. And Linda looks very, very off. Like all the, compared to all the students, she's very pale, white hair. It's like, you can kind of tell, okay, something's off with this girl. She's probably like a vampire in disguise or something. We see later that night. As people are preparing the the Halloween event and stuff, Saya is checking out um, personal files, trying to see if she can gather like anyone who shouldn't be there to see if maybe one of them is the vampire in disguise. She goes into the nurse's office. Uh, it's empty, and she's kind of like looking around. And all of a sudden, we see her. She's like smelling something, and she bends down and she kind of rubs her finger on um, 
on like these four cracks. And then that's when we get like a brief, a brief flashback where we see a uh, blood splatter on the floor. And even though it was cleaned up some of it, like went through the cracks. So no one can, can see this, but Saya, because Saya is not normal, because uh, she is what David refers to as the last remaining original, she can she can smell this. So she's like, all right, this is where the vampires hunt, or this is like where they bring their victims and they feed, and then you know they dispose of the body somewhere else. So she's gonna keep an eye on the nurse and on the nurse's office. Uh, we cut to later that night, uh, where uh, we see Sharon talking to one of the teachers. And basically saying that uh, Linda needs to make a visit at the nurse's office because her anemia is acting up. And Saya overhears this. And so um, we see Sharon take Linda into the nurse's office. Makiho is um, looking through the cabinets for some medicine for Linda. And as this is happening, we see Linda and Sharon communicating. We don't hear what they're saying because we just see their mouths moving, but there's no sound. And it's obvious that they're communicating with each other. And we see Linda st starting to, to sit up and we realize that, okay, these are the two vampires in disguise. But right before Linda can actually do anything, Saya bursts through into the office, uses her sword and slices at Linda, chops her dead. But as she does so, the, the sword because it was dull earlier, it breaks. And um, of course, Makihiko is freaking out. Sharon tries to leave, but Saya is able to slice her on the arm and um, Sharon rushes out. And Makihiko is freaking out. Saya grabs her, tells her to shut up, tells her, uh, you never saw anything. Keep quiet. Don't bring any attention to this. Forget everything that you saw. And then Saya rushes out. We go back to the city where we see the prostitutes, bar owners, whatever they are. Uh, one of them is uh, one of them is like the the, the matron of of this bar, and there's you know drunk people and they're celebrating Halloween and stuff like that. And we see her step outside and she pours a bunch of uh, alcohol onto this pile of newspapers just outside, and she lights it on fire. And I'm assuming she's just like attempting to light the building up. And then we see her transforming, so we realize, oh crap, egg. There's not two vampires um, that people originally thought. There's actually three vampires. So one of them's dead. One of them, Sharon, is injured. And then we have uh, this final one. Yeah, we cut to Saya. She leaves the um, the base. Um, and there's this store just outside the base that Saya earlier saw katana swords. And um, unfortunately, they weren't for sale. But now like she's like, all right, my sword's broken. I need a new one. So she breaks into the place, grabs the one of the katanas, and rushes back towards the base. Meanwhile, uh, Makiho is freaking out. She sees the dead body of Linda that has transformed into like the vampire form. And she decides to go seek out Sharon for some reason. So we have this weird moment where Mahiko is following like this blood trail and the, the blood trail leads into I, I think it's the gymnasium which has been set up as this Halloween party and everyone's there like all the students are there the faculty is there all, they're all in costumes and partying and stuff like that and she follows the blood trail inside and she follows the blood trail like through the dance floor and stuff and I'm just like does nobody notice the blood trail I mean there there are a few drops they're not like you know bunch of gushing blood or anything but you think someone would notice that there's blood on the floor but eventually she sees this figure um like the blood leads to this figure and it's wrapped up in uh like this poster or something and the figure turns and stares at uh Mahiko and it's Sharon and Sharon has transformed into one of these monsters and it goes towards Mahiko when all of a sudden Saya bursts in she rushes through the dancers stabs Sharon with her sword only for the sword to uh bend and she's like it's a fake so yeah it turns out it's a fake sword that she stole Sharon hits Saya sends her flying across the dance floor through the doors and outside the gymnasium no one notices this by the way <laughs> everyone continues partying Sharon then grabs Mahiko covers her mouth and then covers her body with uh the rest of the poster and basically carries her outside she's going to carry her outside to feast 
but um, as she pulls her outside, Saya stabs her in the back with the bent sword, and the monster lets go of Mahiko and rushes away, and Saya gives chase. And that's when we have Mahiko running for help, and she comes across this American soldier, and she's explaining, like, you gotta help me, one of the students, you know, transformed into a monster, and it attacked me. And of course, the soldier is like, you know, it's just some kids playing prank, like, it's, it's Halloween, I remember I used to do that when I was a kid, blah, 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 but Mahiko grabs his arm and pulls him to, to follow her. And then, of course, as this is happening, Sharon, who's hiding up in the tree, grabs the soldier, pulls him up, and kills him. And, of course, I'm just like, man, the brother always gets it in a horror movie. <laughs> like, Jesus, like, there's just, they, they, they just can't get any luck. I feel bad for this dude. He, he was just chilling, minding his own business. Now he has to get killed by a vampire just for trying to be a good guy but yeah sharon kills a soldier mahiko's just kind of watching this freaking out when saya shows up and she throws the bent sword and it you know slices across uh sharon's face and then sharon takes off and flies away somewhere and saya grabs the, the pistol that the soldier dropped and uh grabs uh mahiko and it's like you know come on we got to get the hell out of here and they go to, uh, Saya's like trying to track down where this vampire is, where Sharon went. And she tracks Sharon into this hangar. But there's another soldier out front, and the soldier's like, hey, what are you guys doing here? This is a restricted area, get away. So Saya punches him in the stomach, and then when he doubles over, she kicks him in the face, <laughs> knocks him out. And then she goes inside the, the building, and she's searching for some kind of weapon. She gives Mahiko the soldier's gun, and then she starts digging for, for any kind of weapon she can use. And Mahiko's obviously like, you know, what are you looking for? She's like, a weapon. And Mahiko's like, well, here, take take the gun back. And Saya's like, the gun doesn't do anything against the vampires. To kill the vampires, you have to deliver a devastating blow that causes them to lose a lot of blood in one hit. That's why like swords or melee weapons are good because you can slice them open, you can bisect them, dissect them. You can cause a lot of bloodshed very, very quickly in one hit. So then Mahiko's like, then why did you give me the gun? And so I just point blank says, uh, to kill yourself if things get too dangerous. <laughs> and of course, Mahiko starts freaking out about this. And Saya eventually finds a shovel and it's like, all right, this is going to have to be the weapon that she uses. When all of a sudden the door shuts, the door is locked. And that's when Sharon bursts into the, the room from the ceiling. And uh, Mahiko is obviously freaking out. She grabs her gun and Saya is like, no, don't shoot. But Mahiko starts shooting and the bullets go wild. They start hitting um, gas canisters that are behind uh, the creature and starts exploding. Uh, the explosion kind of knocks Mahiko out of commission for a while. It damages Sharon, but Sharon's not killed. Um, the place starts burning up on fire, and Saya can't get the doors open. And she hears um, gunfire outside, and she looks outside, and she sees that David is there with a, a new katana for her to use. And she's telling David, I get the doors open, um, you know, because this place is, is is burning down around her. So David rushes towards where the door is, and the reason the door is locked is because the soldier that Saya had knocked out earlier to get inside, his body has been shoved through the bars, and it's all twisted and mangled, and basically the body is keeping the door shut. As she's trying to talk to David to get the door open, uh, Sharon wakes up, starts crawling towards Mexico. Saya stabs it with the shovel and starts fighting this thing. This thing gets like the upper hand on, on Saya. Well, it pins Saya down and Saya is looking around and she notices that Mahiko has woken up at this point. Um, Mahiko can't take this anymore. She grabs uh, the pistol, puts it to her head. She's going to blow her brains out. When Saya is like, you know, don't give up, get in the car and run, the, you know, run down the doors. So Mahiko gets inside uh, a military Jeep and charges at the doors and bursts the doors open. And then, um, comes to a stop outside and i guess just all this event just has taken his toll and she passes out and with the doors open dave is able to rush inside he throws the new katana at saya and we have this this really badass moment where just as sharon is about to attack saya saya grabs a sword spins around as she draws the blade and slices sharon in half and 
kills it. And then that's when David tells her um, there's there's one more. And that's when we see the uh, bar owner from earlier. She has transformed. She's on top of the roof of this hangar that's burning down. And she starts transforming. She starts tra- um, transforming to uh, into like her fight mode. Like wings are coming out. This thing's getting ready to fly and take off. And um, we notice that there's this cargo plane. And this final vampire, what it's trying to do is it's trying to fly towards the cargo plane and then grab onto like the wing or something so that it can get the hell out of here. Because, uh, you know, it can't fly all that high. It's, it, it, it glides more than flies. So it's trying to basically make an escape on this cargo plane. So Saya and David hop onto the Jeep. They, you know, pull uh, Mahiko down, lay her on the grass, get in the Jeep, start chasing down this vampire. And then, uh, yeah, uh, we basically have David stepping on the gas. He zooms towards uh, the final vampire. Saya goes and slices the, the vampire, collapses to the floor. The cargo plane is able to take off. David comes to a stop. Saya gets out, starts walking towards the, uh, the vampire that's dying. And we have this moment where Saya just uh, notices that there's you know, her hand is kind of sliced open and stuff and it's bleeding and she holds her hand open and lets some of the blood trickle into this dying vampire's mouth. Don't really know why she's doing that. Um, Maybe it's like she's kind of feeling something for this vampire or something. I don't know. And by feeling something, I don't mean anything like in a romantic sense or anything like that. I just mean maybe she feels like, you know, this vampire is like a part of her kind. Because Saya is not the same as these vampires. These vampires are kind of like the offspring of the originals. So they're they're not the same as the originals, not as strong as the originals. But um, maybe Saya feels some kind of connection or something. I don't know. Uh, I always kind of wish that we could have explored more of that. Maybe they would have done so uh, if this movie was able to get its original three episode OVAs rather than just a single video. But uh, yeah, the creature dies... But yeah, so anyways, uh, David calls Lewis, basically tells them, like, hey, we have the uh, the burning building. There's a corpse in there. There's one in the nurse's office. And then we have a witness. We need you to, you know, deal with that. Get to the witness before the police can reach her. And also get rid of the evidence in the burning building and the, uh, the nurse's office. And so then we cut to some time later where Mahiko is being interviewed by government officials and they're questioning her about what happened that, you know, this night. And she explains the story. The government officials tell her there's there's no evidence of any of that. There's no evidence. Like we, we checked the nurse's office. There's nothing there. The burned down building, there's nothing there. There's no evidence that there were any kind of monsters or anything like that. And, you know, that's when Mahiko is starting to realize, oh, like they, they covered up everything. And... Before she leaves, the government official slides her a photo, and she's like, this girl, Saya, did she look anything like this? And we see a photo of Saya, and the photo was taken in 1892. And just a reminder, this movie takes place in 1966. So there's no way that Saya could still look the same age that she did. And right on the um, top of the picture are the words vampire. And that's when... Mahiko realizes that Saya is no ordinary human. Why the government officials decided to share this information with Mahiko, I don't know. They're trying to cover all this up. I don't know why they would show a picture of Saya from 1892 with the word vampire on it. Again, maybe maybe this was just like for the benefit of us, the audience. But you would think if they want to keep this quiet, they wouldn't have shown this to Mahiko. Just gaslight Mahiko, make her think that's, you know, this past event, like wasn't real or like even if you just let her go like no one's gonna believe her no one's gonna believe that you know two students turn into vampires and then this other woman showed up to fight the vampires and nobody realized it but her because none of the other people saw any of this happen apparently you would think that they would see the part you know in the gymnasium where saya attacked sharon but apparently no one saw that. <laughs> we do have like a moment where it seems like time is kind of slowing down. So I don't know, maybe maybe some kind of vampire power. I don't know. I mean, Mahiko didn't seem to be affected. She's just a regular human. Either way, I'm just kind of rambling at this point. But um, yeah, Mahiko realizes that everything has been covered up, swept under the rug. There's something wrong with Saya. 
And she basically um, returns back to school. She goes back to her nurse's office. And she's, we kind of get like a monologue, a voiceover of her talking that she never really discovered the full truth of what, of Saya, who exactly is Saya, what are these creatures? And she's kind of wondering if maybe Saya is still out there somewhere fighting them. She turns on the radio and the final thing that we hear is that we hear about the, uh, the explosion that brings the U.S. into the Vietnam War, that kickstarts the Vietnam War. And that's how it ends. So yeah, that's Blood the Last Vampire. Like I said, I liked it. I it's it's short, mostly action, very little story. What little story is there makes me wish that this movie had the production budget and the time to be able to pump out the three OVAs because I really want to see more. Apparently the OVAs were gonna cover more of Saya's past and stuff like that, but that never happened. Instead, I guess you, you can get parts of Saya's past and things from the light novels as well as well as the manga. There's a manga, I believe it's called Blood the Last Vampire 2004. I uh, actually have a copy of it. And it, it's basically a direct s- sequel to this movie. It, it's considered the official sequel to this movie. And that covers more of um, Saya's past and things like that. So, uh, yeah, it, it will still be nice to see it in animated form. But regardless... I still think uh, this movie's great. I loved it. The animation's awesome, especially for its time. Um, Saya's cool. Like I love her character. Her this movie, and her character in this movie is what made my love for the uh, badass schoolgirl schoolgirl with the katana trope. <laughs> like, does something about that visual is so cool. Badass females in schoolgirl outfits with the katana is always like cool and. Uh, badass females in um like business suits with the katana like those two images like i don't know why but the, i'm always like it looks so badass for some reason it's weird but uh yeah and i think i think it, it started with blood the last vampire like it's just it's a cool visual and um yeah like i said there's there's the live action movie that is based off of this and kind of adds more to it obviously because this is only 45 minutes the live action is i think an hour and 45 so it has an extra hour and in that one we get more of like saya's backstory and history and things like that and you know what now that i think about it maybe it's kind of good that we don't get to hear too much of saya's backstory we leave it more of a mystery because then it gives her more of this mystique and if you were to explain everything it just it wouldn't you know it kind of would destroy some of that but um, I would have liked to have seen more, not necessarily for background, but just more of her in this version of Saya. Because like I said, we, we get two more animated series, but those are with alternate universe versions of Saya. It would be nice to kind of come back to this one. Maybe maybe we can get, uh, since Blood the Last Vampire has you know become more popular since this um, movie came out, maybe we can get like a remake where... We get to see uh, uh, the original three OVAs animated, so we can see like what it was originally planned. That would be cool. But yeah, Blood the Last Vampire. Like I said, great. If you guys haven't already, check it out. Go go hunt it down. It's, it's an awesome movie. Most of it is in English, and that's how it was originally done because it takes place on an American base. Uh, Saya speaks American and Japanese. David is obviously American. Uh, Mahiko is Japanese, but she also speaks American. And so most of this movie is in English. And there is uh, a few parts in Japanese that are subtitled. So um, I thought that was also kind of cool too. Because that's how it was originally interpreted. It was originally done that way. Uh, It was originally done with mostly uh, an English audio track with very little Japanese, which is always kind of weird and unique when it comes to animes, because obviously animes, you know, they come out in Japan, so they would be mostly in Japanese, but no, this one was actually more English audio than uh, Japanese audio. But yeah, hunt it down, check it out, awesome movie, I loved it, I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10, it's a really, really good movie, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video, tell me what you guys think, if you guys have any recommendations, for uh for movies you'd like to see me do whether they be anime or live action or whatever let me know and um yeah i'll see if i can hunt them down and maybe i'll, I'll do uh, a review one of these days on it 
But hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care, everybody. Hope to see you next time. Later. Thank you.